talk about Stanley's performance because we saw it, just every moment you can sit here like this and you look at it more closely and you see uh, just a, a take well, that must gladden the director's heart. Well, no, I mean that that's like your dream if you write a scene like that and um, and to be perfectly honest with you the end of that scene is an improv that Stanley and Merrill did and you know the scene I wrote ended with the word I like to eat and he said and you're so good at it. and she said I am I'm growing in front of you I am I am good at it. I'm growing right in front of you I mean that is your dream of what's gonna happen when two actors are completely happy working together. Oh, we could have gone on and on and on. <laughs> they, well, and they did well, in several teams. Yeah, but that's yes. what I was going to ask. Is, is your dream to have the freedom to do My that? My dream is to have the director let you do it, even though, yeah. even if he or she is going to cut it out in the end, it makes you feel so creative and you feel like, well, everything we do is right. But, and, and also... That's a but great it, feeling. And, and then it, you get some happy yeah. surprises out of it. And a great script will tee it up so you can go... Absolutely. Really. Has to be there. Julia, you are the butter to my bread and the breath to my life. I love you, darling girl. Mm. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Well, if you think that was in the script, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> you know. I think you were. I, we were walking by Notre Dame in one of the scenes, and I thought, I am Notre Dame, and he's my flying buttress. <laughs> I did. I did. I had that image. He'll never forgive me for that. But he's just. Can you just say that one so, more time? No. Yeah, he's so he's no. He's so. He's so. He's so generous and soulful and effortlessly. There's a certain urbanity and cosmopolitan thing that's very heterosexual in a way that. It's, it's almost like another time, and it was another time. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how Stanley achieves that sort of effortlessly and without a lot of words is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I get the impression that a lot of this kind of thing was happening throughout this movie. Well, that's you what gave you them hope, a framework, and they went. That's what you hope is going to happen when you when you make a movie. You know, I mean, that's that is a thing I learned really early on as a writer. Um, because I started out thinking, oh, don't let them touch a word of my dialogue. And then you start working with people who, who are good writers and are funny, and, and they make it better. You said this before, that Nora gave you the kind of direction that when she told you she needed you to embody, you said this earlier, Julia Powell's idea of mm -hmm. Julia. Mm -hmm. Sean. Yeah. That, that wasn't me. That was Merrill's idea. That was, a, that was one of the ways... Meryl to, to, get, to get onto it. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the ways that I could climb on and not feel too guilty about it. And you did that by reading failing it. Failing <laughs> <a bit. laughs> yes. you know. Failure is something you know? Well, you just always... It's re it is that thing where you say... You spoke of earlier the responsibility to someone who really existed and who people loved, not the population. Right, I didn't right, care right. so much about that, but... Her family. Oh, yeah, tell me about that. You, you, that. you wanted her family didn't to. Didn't want to disappoint. Yeah, yeah. You wanted them to say you nailed it. I know. Or I you just, were true to I her spirit. I captured her. Yes, because really, really, for me, it was more like. Um, I mean, honestly, it was more a, an homage to my own mother, who had so many of the outsized elements of Julia's character and her joy in living and her sense of fun and mischief and being up for anything and game and not interested in whining whatsoever. You know, all those things. And I thought, oh, here's Mary. And I get to do it. <laughs> Here is Mary, your mother. Yeah. Now, are you your mother's daughter? I have a little bit of both, I think. Which is the... My, well, my mother and my father. Oh. <laughs> and my dad is, was much more of a romantic and um, a musician and a, and a little melancholy and a little dreamy and solitary. And I have all of those things, too. Did they both live to see all the good things that happened to you? Yes, yes. 
all the <laughs> grandchildren. And <laughs> yeah, but my mom died in uh, 2001 when this <clears throat> takes place, and this film, yeah. and um, and it's opening today on her birthday. So I feel like if there's some wonderful serendipity at work. So was that in your mind, clearly? It's well, never far from my mind. <laughs> and you're a role, as they say. <laughs> Is she not? No kidding. No kidding. Lots of no roles. kidding. Um, I mean, isn't it a great time to be Meryl Streep? Yeah, I mean, but I mean everything. The I family just keep thing. The kids over are. My head, why? You know, thinking, oh man. Oh man. I'm getting set up here. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I'm just fishing. <laughs> no, I mean just by fate. Oh. Um. Uh, Kinahora. You know, we don't want to look at their, our good fortune really mm. in the eye, mm. but I am very happy and lucky, and uh, tired at the moment, ready to take a, a break. I've well, made how long more is a movies. Break? Well, I made seven movies in two and a half years. Why? I don't know, because they asked me to. And, it, <laughs> and I guess my children were older yeah. and said, go, go, do, you know. Do you continue to learn? Yeah, sure. Do you really? Yeah. In other words, having done the, had this experience, you are a better... I don't know. I don't know. This, this was so <sighs> fun. And sort of effortless that it, it didn't. I think you you learn more from the challenging things, the things that are tougher to do. In, what was in the, the past? What was the toughest? Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> Sophie's Choice or no, um, no, no, no. There have been tough things that I care. I probably won't go into, but um, just because, just because they, I. My molecules change in me, according to how happy I am, and whether and my creativity gets. Um, you know I, what I learn every time out is how to wrangle all the elements that make m me love what I do and make it sort of happen effortlessly. And when it when that doesn't come easily, I don't really have a bag of tricks to go to and no, or a method, you know? I don't. So I come unmoored and part of that is a very good thing because you have to reassemble. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. No, but we do. do. I'm sitting here thinking. Yes, actors I do. do. But, but so, <laughs> no, no, no. And, and uh, so it's very good to have to start blank and, and figure out how to begin again. How to begin again. It's very good. How are actors different than the rest of us? Well, they live a Zen life. It's everything. It's very uncertain, and all lives are uncertain. But actors know it, and actors because you're unemployed so so often, and you live so intensely in the moments that you are working. Uh, that. Um, when when you come back to earth and uh look around and you know that balloon has gone and there's no other one on the horizon so you you live where you are i think actors live exactly where they are mm. the really good ones and that's why they seem kind well, we of crazy we all should be there and that you where know? we should all mm -hmm. want to be but they're really yes i think so I think where it's an authentic way yeah. to live. Yeah. Thank you. Really, congratulations. Thank this you. is quite. And to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.